It's time for some self-massage. Today we're going to focus on using these mid-size grippy massage balls. And the focus of self-massage is to use this ball to glide across your tissues <clears throat> and to jostle the skin layer through movement and steady pressure so that you can reduce muscle tension, increase circulation, and fluff out your tissues so that you can feel better, feel some more hydration through your tissues, through your fascia lines. And it may be useful to do some of this ball rolling self-massage work um, instead of a yoga practice. This has an incorporated influence of um, yoga shapes that we've been restorative. Um, and you can also do it before a practice or before a long walk um, and in place of a massage. So today we're going to start with pulling uh, some ingredients to our practice space. So you'll need a mid-size uh, grippy massage ball. It has little nubs on it so that they can move into the skin layers a little bit. So it will jostle the skin um, to basically hydrate the tissues. If you have a belt, I'd like you to have one of those on your practice space, a blanket or a towel. And if you have a couple blocks, that would be useful at the end. Simple. Let's lie onto our ball. So I'm going to place the ball so it's in the middle of my back. As I lean back on top of the ball, I'm going to use some steady pressure into the ball, which is in my mid-back at the spine. I'm going to bring my feet a little wider than hips distance, slightly turn my feet in, and feel as my arms reach back, interlacing my fingers behind my head. And then I'm going to glide forward and back, giving myself permission so that my body weight sink into the ball and at my own pace, glide forward and downwards over the ball and try to let the body's weight push into it to massage the tissues. Whether they feel tight or not, we're going to get through the entire structure. Now you can get a little bit more free play and make other circles or isolate to one shoulder and do a little twist. Maybe reach your arms, let your head lower down to the floor and feel where the ball is. Insert it almost at your shoulder blade. Let it fluff the tissues. Be random with your movements. So if you can find a slow, pressured, purposeful pace here. Keep the arms in the back and switch sides. You might bounce a little bit back and forth because it is a ball and balls bounce. You can encourage where it feels maybe a little bit choppy in the tissues to move, maybe reaching. And then a few more moments on the back, hands behind your head. Feel where the ball is a little higher on your back, maybe at the very top of the back, closest to the mat. And feel your feet so they're wide, the knees to touching together. The legs are in a little bit more of a pyramid pose. And let the very upper part of your back at the base of the neck settle onto the ball. Let your head be held in your hands so you're supporting your brain and neck. Breathe, feel the pace of your breath. Hold the belly. Exhale, center, and as I move back, squishing the ball, I'm going to carefully roll a little to the side, and as I 
Slide the bow down near my hips. I'm now going to lower my head back on top of my blanket and push into my feet in a pelvic tilt lifting and then move the ball so it's right at your sacrum. So at the base of your spine, let your body sink into that ball. Okay. Feel the anchoring of your heels, the feet parallel to the front of your mat. Feel the shoulders back. Door number one, hands are down, reaching towards your feet. Shoulders back, pressing down. Okay, door number two, bring your knee at one at a time in towards the chest, alternate one knee in and feel how the spine starts to gradually arch and flex. So when my knee draws in, my spine lengthens. And when my foot lowers down, my spine moves into a bit of a back bend. Feel when you alternate knee in towards the chest. And then option three would be both knees up, balance, hands pressed, forearms pressed, and then lifting up into a permanent press. Yeah, jitteriness is part of ball balancing. Right? So if your sacrum is balancing on the ball, you might associate finding balance with moving your arms out, and you might associate balance with your arms really close to you to anchor your spine. Avoid turning your head side to side in this position. You want to feel our neck centered, our eyes either closed or in a fixed gaze. And complementary pace of your breath. Feel the abdomen on the in breath, filling the belly. And on the out breath, empty the lungs. At any time, you need to bend the knees or bring your feet to the floor. A few more moments. Let the pace of your breath support your entry into balancing upon the ball. Give it a few more moments here with this emphasis of feeling the core Waking up. Knees bent. Okay. One foot at a time down. And then as I push into my feet, I'm going to lift up my hips and move the ball over to my right glute. So I'm going to place the ball so it's at the upper part of my buttock, my glute um, medius. And I'm more I'm interested in that you can put the weight of your body into the ball and then start to push side to side so you're swiveling your hips like you're wagging your tail and the emphasis is on the right glute. So feel where you massage a little side to side. Now feel the pressure, feel movement. The nice thing about these mid-size and fairly um, firm self-massage balls is that you can get a little more uh, surface space with these balls versus uh, trigger point balls or the tune-up ball um, or a tennis ball. It just has a little bit more give to it because it's wider, a little bit more surface space. So it actually feels like a little bit of a massage, like a hand, right, versus like a fist. So that has a little more global shearing. Now, when I move into the other side, I'm going to bring my feet to push. And as I bring the ball to the left glute, the left buttock, I'm moving side to side. And you might feel your knees shift over to the side. Give yourself a little bit of free play with it. 
You can let your eyes close and feel the sustained pressure into the ball and even out pressure and movement, even out those two focal points, pressure, movement, cross fiber, stretching. When it's stretching, it's massaging the tissues when you're stretching the tissues. That's kind of the difference, I think, with the ball work. Okay, now, as we move the ball now to the space between the knees, I'm going to bring my, my leg musculature to push into the ball. As I lower my feet down, the ball could viscerally be anywhere center of the uh, leg spin. You might bring it a little bit farther to the mid stand if you're um, going to focus on the bridge flows for a little longer. Um, I find that it's useful to boost the circulation in the, the lymph on the adductors, right? The lymph and the deep groin. So you might uh, play with that a little bit. We have some time for that. So as I have the feet about hips distancing, I'm going to lift up my arms, practicing good hip distancing here. My arms reach back over, and I'm allowing my hands to be empty. Hips are lifting, quads flushing. Now as you are elevated with your hips, you're gonna squeeze into the ball, okay? So noticing the glutes activate, your, your buttock muscles have activated now. So as you lift up your heels, start to lower your spine, Glide the spine down and then the hips, and then finally the arms, heels down. Inhale, squeeze and elevate your pelvis and feeling where it's murky, right? Notice when I lift up if there's a bit of a um, unsure amount of pressure into my ball, I'm going to push into the ball, that's going to be the, the surefire way to activate. And then this time my heels are down as I lower down the spine. Guide the breath with each movement. So considering one breath per movement, inhaling, hips lifting, squeeze into the ball, Exhale, spine unloading. The whole practice is about unloading tension. So part of this is a blend of some coordination and strength into the stretching of the tissues, the fluffing of the tissues. Now, as I bring the knees into the chest, I'm going to move the ball and place it next to my right buttock. Okay, right to the, actually just to the hip here, right hip. Bring the left foot to the right knee so it's crossing over. And in this instance, what we'll do is we'll lower the right foot to the floor and then start to let the right thigh push into the ball so your knees are crossed over. But your focus is your spine is centering on the floor. You're not twisting your spine over, right? You're holding the left knee with the right hand and you're directing that leg towards your right side. Left arm straight back. Give a good pull of that left leg into you and you might need to manage the ball a little bit. You might find oh, it feels like it's just on the edge of where I really need that to massage into. So maybe you come back and move it a little closer in. Or maybe you work a little bit farther down the lateral rotators. That feels pretty nice because we'll get into those soon. So feel the lateral rotators that side. IT band. And when you feel purpose with 
the position. You know where you're going. You're pulling, you're reaching, you're leaning into the ball. Breathing, center your legs back in and lift up the right foot and reach both hands to thread the needle, reaching behind the right thigh and squeeze. Fairly determined in towards your ribs. Relax the right foot, focus into the left, head centering. Now be curious about where the circulation is roaming in the leg. Right? Notice if it's clearly the hip or is it the thighs? Is it the back that's stretching? And I find that the sensation is pretty deep into my left buttock and my inner thigh. And then it obviously is releasing like that. I like that. A little bit of a pull. Relax your grip. And as you lower your right foot, you're going to bring the ball, press it to the left inner leg. See if you can palpate those two tissues a bit. You're going to push the ball on that left inner thigh, and you're pushing and massaging the tissues. So you want to get fairly. Uh, supported with your hands on that ball and pressing. So it kind of grabs your skin layer, the dermal layer, and supports the fluidity and the hydration of the tissues. Now you can get as high up as the attachment, right, to the pelvis with the pushing, and you might decide to stay right into the um, mid leg, okay? Now, as we move the ball to our left hip, now we're changing sides. So you're placing the ball next to your left hip. Left foot down, right foot lifts up and crosses to left knee. And you're going to let the weight of the body sink over to that ball and hold onto the right knee with your left hand and reach the right arm back. Observing where the traction is, ideally roaming in the hip. No, hip roaming. So when you pull on the leg, feel the awareness through the joint, nourishing, circulating. You know, half of the practice is a little bit of belief here and that it's useful. So just noticing your perspective if you're following each motion as if it's an exercise program, you might linger for moments here and there on, this is pretty nourishing for the tissues. It's a balancing wave into my body. And the waves of nourishment. Now, when we move back center, this time let's go backwards on this one. We'll place the ball so it's right on the inner of the right thigh and massage the tissues. Try to feel where you're pushing and you'll keep the shoulders back. And as you motion, with that ball, you're pushing and trying to actually get some roll with the ball. Press and roll, press and roll. Purposeful, press, press. Yeah, learn how to do a little bit of self massage through this work. You see if you can't get a massage. And now fall down, pull behind the right. Sorry, the left side, that's right. It's an easier attachment third of my hand. So I'm reaching uh, to the back of my left thigh. My right foot is neutral. It's 
it's simply hooked on to my um, the base of my left thigh, right above the knee. And when I pull it, I let my left foot relax. Now get a feel where your right elbow is kind of jabbing into the right thigh. Breathing in usually kind of lifts the corners of the mouth. Let the belly feel its wave of concentration with your in and out breath. Receiving your breath. Relaxing on the out breath. With this motion of our spine centering, start to release the grip and hold on to the back of the legs and let's roll up to sitting and slide back so that your blanket gets pushed over to the side. If you like a blanket under your knees or um, you can make your mat a little bit bulkier in the middle. That could be helpful here for knee pressure. It depends on the surface you're on below your mat. But we're going to place the ball so it's right at the, the knee, right knee. And I'm going to slide the left knee out like I'm crawling. And then as I lower down to my forearms, I'm going to lower all the way onto the forearms and glide forward and back the ball massaging the quad and all the way up to the hip flexor. So if you're on a surface where you don't need a blanket, it can be nice so that you can get the full range of the right quad stuff here. If you're not quite in the hip flexor, hip flexors, sorry, you'll get into that space. Hip flexors. So I like to let my body actually roll a little bit into the ball and really get it stuck onto your lateral rotator and flush it down. Spend some energy pushing into the ball with your, your leg and your hips, your pelvis is quite powerful, right? And it can hold a lot of balance in your body. So feel like your hip could use that massage. You might kind of let the body squish the ball, kind of ooze around it. Tissue oozing. Now try to keep that ball stuck to you. Just like if you are a massage therapist, you know one of those rules is to not lose contact. So I'm trying to keep with the ball. That's key, not lose contact. And then we'll take the ball to the left side. And I'll stretch the right leg up, kind of hook the leg on the floor. And this is not necessarily one sequence. You'll see this the part of the sequence where you'll see every little attention to detail because you are feeling through the tissues that are personally maybe grippy issues in your tissue. So if you can kind of start to glide right into your arm, right into the thigh, kind of follow that rotator sheath into that maybe piriformis so you get a little higher up. Yeah, this mid-sized ball is not going to cause any harmful um, pressure into the joint capsule, into the fibers, right? So it's not going to be breaking it down. Right? It's going to be slowly tugging at the skin layer. And kind of jostling the skin. So we're trying to go for gliding, kind of global shear. Now again, try to stay connected. Find a final space with this type of work side. If you prefer to stay in the front with the quad, find that front. Shifting. 
Okay, hands and knees on a blanket or not, you choose hands under shoulders. And knees find a little width, round your back into a cat shape and get the feel of reaching your hips back towards your feet. Inhale, round the back and move your hips straight down. Your hands could be in a seal form, turning out your hands, your fingers. And as you start to move back into the center, I want you to focus on this forward and back motion. So feel the front of the thighs stretching. And feel as you tip back. Reaching your hips back, full reach. And then hollow the belly and work on that form of lengthening the front. Reach through that corridor of the waist. Okay, feel a few moments right here in a variation of back bending, arm focus. Now, as you come back to a table shape, you can take a inverted V pose. Feel your brain center between your arms. Feel your heels reach towards the floor. Feel the spine lengthen. And start to walk your hands either back to your feet or your feet towards your hands. So the knees bending and your hands holding your elbows, dangling, elephant swing. So as you hold your elbows as if you're making figure eights in space. So you can let the elbows shift so that the arms feel that circulation. Finally, when the knees bend, we're going to let the hands lower, and depending on where your feet are in placement, we're going to lower back to the floor, and we're going to roll to sitting on lowering onto our backs. Blanket underhead, grasp a hold of your blocks on the sides of your mat, and they're at the level of your thighs. As you lower down so that the belt comes in to support you, I'd like you to simply bring your leg, right leg in towards your chest and reach the belt under your right foot. Extend through both legs, one up and one straight forward. Hold onto the belt with your left hand and cross the right leg over to your left. Stay disciplined with it, crossing from the hip. Straight across, keep it simple-minded here. Feel the right leg trying to lengthen as if you're kicking out into the belt. Pressing, pressing. Now, as you move the right leg up, hold the bell with your right hand. And I encourage you to slide the left knee into bending. And then as you hold on to the left knee with the left hand, you're going to move the right leg out. And feel when that leg motions out, the left knee motions out. And if you would like to use your blocks, you can tuck in your block right at the very top attachment of that right thigh where the block would support your hip and you can put the block on the left side at the same spot as you hold on to the inner lining of the knee it's mostly a setting for support if you're quite mobile you might notice that it's nice to have that setting so you don't get any cattywampus in your pose Push into your right foot. Breathe. 
kind of tug on the belt and bend your knee and then bring it back up center. And as you switch legs and the belt, lift up left leg, bring the right leg down. Keep it simple. Cross the left leg over to the right. Feel your foot push. Feel your arm pull. And manage the draw of breath. So if you take a draw in, and you empty out the lungs. Feel at the rib pressure into the floor when you move your leg back up center. Try to feel your ribs into the floor, the back line, the back chamber. Left hand belt, right foot draws in. Now you could feel what it's like when the right knee moves out, okay, into an open angle, and left leg is out. So you could play with these variations. I find balance at the adductor level is kind of responsible posing. Um, so my interest is in a little more of the science behind it for circulation. So finding a way to make this deeply nourishing for my circulatory experience in the tissues. So that is a feeling of a deep stretch. Let your eyes center in. Now as you bend the left knee and move both feet up into the belt, feel your feet push into the belt and try to maintain so the elbows are uh, close by your sides. You might slide your hands down the belt closer to your sides. So it's a little bit less of a muscling into it as it's structurally finding good habits. So scanning the structural points. It's like you have all these lines of energy in this pose. The lines of energy on your feet, your belt is close to the ball, the balls of the feet. We're working with the ball today. So we're back to the um, full awareness of the feet and the balls of them. Yeah, feel the lines of energy in the legs. And as we bend the knees and slide the belt off the feet, bring your feet together, your knees out into a reclining butterfly pose, Sutta Baddha Konasana. Feet together, knees sliding out to the blocks underneath the thighs to support your hinge. And find if the block you want to contour that so it is supporting that skin layer versus jabbing the layer. You can stay with this support, feel the spine centered back, reaching for your belt, bring that belt wide overhead, you have a generous span of your chest. Feel your hands move out as far as they still have guidance of circulation in your chest muscles, your arms. Receive your breath, filling the belly. Exhale out of the lungs. Let go of your belt, let your hands glide out to a relaxed pattern for your shoulders and for your mind, whatever that might be, arms by you or a hand on the heart, a hand on the belly. Return the body to balance through the wave of focused breathing.
as we conclude this practice. Noticing the effects maybe on the nervous system. And any of the techniques that you experience that you can come back to. Take note. Feel refreshed. 